Welcome back to Milan Recording Studios. My name is James Popple Shotgrass, and in today's video, I have a comparison between two Kawai digital pianos. The one on top here is the Kawai ES110, a digital piano that falls into the sub $1,000 price category. Here in the United States, it typically goes for around $699. The ES8 falls into the between $1,000 and $2,000 category. That's a general price class for this, and this one typically runs for around $1,499 US dollars. So clearly, these are in different price classes and because they're in different pri price classes you're getting a a much different user experience between the two. But the reason I wanted to do this video is while typically I compare equivalent digital pianos, I wanted to compare these two in today's video because if somebody was looking for a Kawai digital piano, and especially if they're looking for the more affordable side of things, these would be two options that they have available, the ES110 and the ES8. So I thought it'd be cool to compare the differences and see what benefits you get with the more expensive digital piano. And I think before I get around to playing it and showing you guys the audible differences, I'd talk about the visual and physical differences first. One of the most notable things between the ES8 and the ES110 is the build quality. The build quality of the ES110 is honestly pretty decent. It's not phenomenal, but it's definitely not subpar either. It's definitely a, right along the same um, quality of build quality as the other digital pianos in its price class. It is made of plastic, but it does seem pretty sturdy, and I don't think you'd have any d issues with the build quality of it unless it fell down a flight of concrete stairs or something along those lines. It does have a very nice appearance to it, and honestly, it looks pretty good. Also, is pretty compact as well. Both of these are surprisingly slim and compact digital pianos that have very nice actions in them. The build quality of the ES8, though, is honestly pretty much unparalleled within its price class. Other digital pianos within the same price class do have a good build quality, but the ES8 is, in my opinion, the best. It's made of basically all metal and with some wood components as well. I believe these side blocks here are made of wood. The front little panel here is made of metal. This top panel is made of metal. The speaker grill is metal. The back panel here is metal in the back. And the underside is, I believe, perhaps a thick slab of plastic, or it could be wood with a a plasticky finish on it, but either way, it's a sturdily built digital piano that honestly feels like a tank. While certain elements of it have been downgraded from uh, Kawhi's higher models, especially the MP11 SE, what has not been downgraded is the build quality. It has a build quality very reminiscent of the tanky MP11 SE, and they've cut very few corners when it comes to the build quality. So the build quality of the ES8 is honestly phenomenal and is nearly unparalleled within this price class. Something else that has been upgraded from the ES8 to the ES110, certainly in use of materials, is the music desk. This here, if I can grab it without looking at it, this is the music desk for the ES110, and honestly, it's perfectly adequate. It is a simple plastic slab that sits right up here like so, and that is how it looks. It's decent, it works, but it's just pretty average. I can't really say I have any flaws with it, but you know, let's be honest, it's not really anything super special. What is super special, though, is this guy. This is the music desk that comes with the ES8, and this is something that has not been downgraded from the MP11 SE. This is the exact same solid metal music stand that's used with the MP11 SE, and I think we can agree that this is pretty special, honestly. You don't see too many solid metal music stands in today's industry, and, you know, the build quality of this is absolutely fantastic. It's, it's one of my favorite music stands of the piano, the digital piano world, and the only improvement I could think to make of it would be to have it be a little bit longer, because it is on the shorter side of things. The only other small issue I can have with it is sometimes this bottom lip here can be a little bit big and get in the way of turning pages, but that's a pretty small issue. The build quality of it, I think, makes up for that. One similarity that these two have is actually the pedal unit. Even though they come from two different price classes, they both use the same exact pedal unit. Let me grab that and show it to you guys. This is Kawai's pedal unit that comes with both the ES110 and the ES8, and I believe it's known as the F10H, and it supports half pedaling. This is a very stubby, compact little pedal unit, and honestly, it's really pretty fantastic. In the ES10's price category, in the sub $1,000 price category, this is by and far the best included pedal that comes with any digital piano. It comes with the ES110 straight out of the box, and while the other competitors like Yamaha and Roland's do have a pretty equivalently quality upgradable pedal, well, I don't know about Roland's, but I do know about Yamaha's, the 
ES110 comes with this pedal straight out of the box, which none of the others do. So I think that's a really, really big bonus the ES110 has over the other digital pianos in its price class. And honestly, this is a phenomenal pedal, even in this price class as well. I'd put it right up against the included pedal unit for Yamaha's P515. Both that one, which I'm forgetting the name of right now, and the F10H are pretty much equivalently good damper pedals. Um, this one, they both have a pretty equivalent uh, build quality. They got some solid plastic on top and solid metal underneath, big rubbery feet that make it not move very much at all on the floor and the pedal itself has a really great feel. This is one of my favorite d damper pedals of the digital piano world and I am very very happy with it. There's a couple more physical differences about these two that I wanted to discuss before we get on to the actual sound of them, and one of those is the user interface. A big advantage of the ES8 over the ES110 is the fact that you have a much more in-depth user interface. There's a couple more physical differences between the ES8 and the ES110 that I wanted to talk about, and one of those is the user interface. One of the biggest advantages with going with the ES8 is you get a much more in-depth and detailed user interface than with the ES110. The ES110 110 can actually do quite a few different things, but many of its features, like the lesser used ones like touch sensitivity and a few other things, are actually hidden within the keys, as well as changing the tempo of the metronome. You do that by holding buttons down on the user interface itself and pushing certain keys of the instrument, which unfortunately are not labeled very well. This is not amazing, but most of those features you'd want to mess with aren't really features you'd want to mess with on a day-to-day -day basis, with the exception of the metronome speed, and I believe there are ways that you can change that without using the keys as well, at least with other digital pianos there are perhaps with the ES110 as well. Um, but the ES8 has absolutely none of that. It has no hidden features within the keys and they're all within the menu itself, which I think is a big, big upgrade. Both of these have a built-in recorder. The ES8's built-in recorder is has a lot more functionality to it. The ES8 also has a rhythm section as well that can play drum beats. I don't believe the ES110 can do that. And the metronome of the ES8 is better as well because you can change the time signature as well as the tempo just with the buttons of the screen. You also have a lot more control over the reverb with the ES8, you have a lot more control over the effects with the ES8, and there's just a bunch of different features that it can do that are a lot easier to do than on the ES110. So the user interface is a big, big upgrade of the ES8. Now the user interface is a little bit quirky, the screen is kind of small, and the way they've decided to have it work is a little bit quirky and can take some time to get used to, but it's not super counterintuitive, and you do get used to it after a little bit of use, and after a while it becomes pretty logical. The final difference I wanted to talk about with the ES8 is the speakers, and that's another upgrade you get with the ES8. Now, the speakers of the ES8 aren't as loud as other digital pianos within its same price class price class, specifically the P515, those speakers are really loud, but the speakers of the ES8 still do have a very nice sound. The speakers of the ES110 are adequate, especially for practicing at home, but if you wanted to play in public, you'd probably want to bring along your own amplifier so people could hear you better. They do have a little bit of a stuffy, muffled sound, but they are definitely adequate for practicing at home. The speakers of the ES8 are a lot louder and do have a more pure sound, but again, they're not the loudest in its price category. I think with all of that out of the way, I think now it's finally time to begin to play the two digital pianos. So what I'm going to do is play a little excerpt of some Claire de Lune as usual on both of these two digital pianos, and we'll see what the sound differences are.
don't know why I decided to play the piece backward and play the sections out of order, but I wanted to demonstrate the low bass of these two pianos as well because it sounds pretty nice on both of them, so I played the piece backward. I hope you guys didn't mind that. Both of these digital pianos do have a pretty decent sound, but I think you guys can tell which one has the better sound. Obviously, it's the Kawai ES8, the more expensive digital piano. The sound of the ES110 is definitely adequate. It would be perfect for a first time or even a second um, level piano. You know, you buy the first one and then you buy the ES110 as your second upgrade to the digital piano. It would be a perfectly adequate sound, especially for a beginning or mid tier pianist, but there are some things about the ES8 that make the sound a lot better. First of all, the sound of the ES8 is a bit more warm and rich sounding compared to the sound of the ES110, which does have a bit of a lot of nice detail. Like the sympathetic resonance, but it does sound a bit thinner and more glassy than the sound of the ES8. Now, I did mention that the treble of the ES110 was nice, and the treble of the ES8 is even better, in my opinion. It really pops out and sings over the rest of the chords that you're playing, and it's really, really gorgeous to listen to. The ES110 also has a good sounding treble, I just like the treble of the ES8 more. Let me play my treble test piece and see what the differences are there. So there's another taste of the sound of the piano samples of the ES8 versus the ES110, and I really like the sound of the ES8. The ES110 is by no means bad, but the ES8 just sounds a whole bunch better. Another thing that makes the ES8 a bit better is the fact that there's way more different piano samples on the ES8 than on the ES110. There's a few of them on the ES110, but there's quite a few more on the ES8. The default one is the SK Concert Grand, sampled from a Shigeru Kawai SKEX. The next one is an EX Concert Grand, which is sampled from just a standard EX Kawai piano, which used to be their flagship until the SK line came out. Um, up next is a Jazz Grand, up next is a Warm Grand, and then there's a pop grand, and then it loops around back to the SK concert grand. The next, there's also a second piano category as well, which contains an SK5 grand piano, which is a smaller model of the Shigeru Kawai line. Then you also have an upright piano, which I assume is a Kawai upright piano. You also have a second version of pop grand. You have a modern piano. You have a rock piano and then back around to the SK-5. So you have quite a few different sound selections of the ES-8 as well. So if you don't like the SK Concert Grand for whatever reason, if you want it to be brighter or you want a different sound, you want it to sound like a smaller piano or an upright piano, the ES-8's got your back. It's got a lot of different acoustic piano sounds. I'm not gonna run through every single one of them, um, but I think I will try out the bass test piece uh, on the SK-5. This is another piece I've written to test out the low end, and we'll see how the bass di sounds different on the SK-5 than the SKEX Grand. And I'll also play the same thing up here on the ES-110 as well. I'll use, let's see, let's hit the piano button a couple of times and get a different piano sound there, and we'll just compare them two. They won't be equivalents necessarily, but just we'll see what a different sound of each of these sounds like. <laughs> Thank you. 
there's another taste of a different electric or acoustic piano sample of both of these and I think again they sound pretty nice the SK5 again is a different flavor it's a different size piano and honestly it reminds me of the qualities you might find of a real SK5 it's got a rich but also a smaller sounding bass and a warm mid-range as well Let's go back to the default piano of both of these. Now with the ES110, again, I mentioned there's features hidden within the keys. And one of the things is the different sounds. You can push and hold the category button and use the white keys to select a different sound, but the keys are not labeled and the uh, piano button doesn't have any, like a list of the different sounds that it has in it either. So it's difficult to tell which exact sound you're on, but I will go back to the default piano patch up here, just in case I want to return to it later. And let's move on now to the the electric piano category which I think is where things start to get a bit interesting as well between the two. Both of these default to a Fender Rhodes sound. Down here on the ES8, it's simply called Classic Electric Piano, and the Rhodes is indeed pretty classic by these times. So let's check out the sound of the Fender Rhodes on the ES8 and on the ES110 and see what the differences are. So clearly you can hear there's some differences with the Fender Road sound of the ES8 and the ES110 as well, and I think you guys can also probably tell which one is better. Once again, the prize goes to the ES8. You might expect that Kawai, a company that's mostly known for acoustic pianos, wouldn't really have a good Fender Rhodes sample, but yet they do. That's actually not too shabby at all. It very, It's very fun to play, and it honestly has a pretty good sound. I wouldn't say it's as good or better than a real Fender Rhodes, but if you're looking for a portable Rhodes sound in your Kawai piano, the ES8 is a great way to go. It's got a very, very nice sound, and I believe that's the exact same Rhodes sample you would find on the MP7 SE or even the MP11. So that's that's pretty awesome. The ES110 does not use that same Fender Rhodes sound, unfortunately. It uses a different lower quality one. The tone of it is a little more muffled, not really muffled, but it's a little more percussive and a little more shrill, not shrill even. It's hard to describe what the differences are apparently here. Um, but it does have a different sound up here in the treble and the low range, I think, is where the ES110's Rhodes sound has the biggest problems. It doesn't really have any dynamic control. It's either the low, quiet, muffled tone of the roads, or it's a bright, barky sound with no variance in between. So let me demonstrate that for you. What I'm going to do is play, let's do this low G on both of these, and I'll slow, I'll start off by playing quiet, and I'll slowly ramp up on both of them in volumes, and you'll hear a big difference between the ES8 and the ES110. The ES8 has way more expression and sounds a lot more real. So clearly there's way more detail here with the ES8 and with the ES110. The ES110, you can go from playing it very quietly or pretty loudly and it stays the same and then all of a sudden it will change. The ES8 has a lot more variance and a lot of much bigger gradient of sound quality, especially in the low bass and throughout the whole instrument. And honestly, it sounds pretty amazing. The next sound we have here of the ES8 on the ES8 and the ES110 is a Wurlitzer type sound. On the ES8, it's simply labeled as 60s E piano, and on the ES110, there is no name for it. So let's try out the 60s E piano and see what the differences are there. Thank you. 
It's hard to say for sure without listening to the direct signal. I'm just listening to the speakers here on the ES8 and the ES110. And because the ES8s are a bit more clear sounding, these do sound a little bit different. But I'm pretty sure that's the exact same sample on both of them, which is pretty cool. And I also believe it's one of the Worley samples that you might find on the actual MP11 SE2. Um, so the ES110 Worley sound is phenomenal for the price class. I think it's one of the best ones. And the ES8's Worley sound here is also pretty good for the price class too. I also think it's one of the best ones as well. So we've got a really cool Worley sound, a really cool road sound on the ES8, which is pretty fantastic. Now I want to go back to that road sound for a second here because there was actually something that I wanted to talk about with it that I forgot to mention. So I'm back here at the classic EP and one of the things we can do on the ES8 very easily is change reverb and also change the effects. If I push and hold the effects button, it brings up effects type and I can scroll through here and change different effects. One of the effects that people typically will use on the Fender Rhodes is an auto pan and of course the ES8 has an auto pan. The ES110 I think has a very, very, very subtle auto pan on that Rhodes sound. Where are we at? Where are we? Need Rhodes sound. The ES110 I think has a very subtle uh, road sound or auto pan on the road sound, but it's a lot more customizable and a lot more prominent on the ES8. So what I want to do here is do something interesting I've never done before. Obviously you guys can hear differences between the two, but also I want you guys to see the differences as well. So what I'm going to do is actually show you guys the mixer that we use and show you the channels that we're using for the ES110 and the ES8. Now the first thing you probably think of when I say we're using a mixer is that I'm using the EQ in the mixer to alter the sounds of these. But when you see this video, pay close attention to the EQ on the mixer, specifically for those four channels. For my voice, I can really do anything I want. It doesn't really matter how I EQ my voice. But the digital pianos, I never EQ them through the digital piano itself, unless I'm demonstrating the EQ, or through the mixer itself. I always run the digital pianos as pure as possible, and so the mixer isn't altering our sound. So what we're going to do is show you the sound of the ES8. I'm going to play some chords of it on it to um, to show you the auto pan. I'll change the, the, the effects and you can see the levels move up and down. And the ES110 does move a little bit, but you can definitely tell that there's a lot less auto pan going on. And I don't believe you can change that on the ES110. <laughs> So there you go, there's a little demo of the auto pan of the ES8, which is pretty fantastic sounding. I really like it a lot, and the fact that you can really easily customize it on the fly is pretty great as well. The ES110's road sound, I think, is definitely inferior to the sound of the ES8. The ES8's road sound is really pretty fantastic. There's a couple of other cool sounds in the ES8 as well. There's a modern EP, which I believe this guy has as well. Let's check this out. Once again, I think that those are in fact the same exact sample, but the ES8 has a little bit more brilliance and detail to the sound because the speakers are better. Up next in the ES8 category is Classic Electric Piano 2, which is a unique one to the ES8. It's a brighter, punchier version of that same Fender Rhodes we heard earlier. I'm not going to play that one though because I think it's time to move on to the organ section of the ES8. The ES110, the organ sounds are in the same category as the electric pianos, and so they're this next sound should be an organ.
So that is the drawbar organ on the ES8 compared to the default tone wheel style organ of the ES110. If you push the organ button again, you also get a jazz organ, which I believe is an exact duplicate of the organ sound of the ES110. Those tone wheel organs definitely don't sound like a real Hammond B3, but they're also definitely not the worst tone wheel organ style sounds I've ever heard, and they actually sound pretty decent. Up next in the organ category for the ES8 is a principal octave, which is a pipe organ style sound. rather pretty sounding and then up next is a church organ which is meant to emulate a bigger more full church organ sound with more stops pulled out the es110 does not have the principal octave sound but it does have this bigger sounding church organ well it's meant to sound bigger but honestly it doesn't really sound great on either one of them they're the exact same sound and uh, well i'll just let you listen for yourself As you can hear, it's definitely rather cheesy sounding, but one thing I will say that's beneficial about the ES8 once again is those speakers. That particular sound especially brings out the quality of speakers a lot more in the ES8 than the ES110. The ES8 sounded way louder when I played that piece there than the ES110 did, so you can definitely tell, especially with that particular sound, that the ES8 has bigger, better, louder speakers. Up next in the organ category for the ES8, it loops around, and I think it's the same thing for the ES110. Up next should be a road sound. Indeed it is, so that's the end of the electric piano category. There's also the others category on the ES110 and a couple more categories on the ES8. Both of these, I think, have a harpsichord sound. I'm thinking it's going to be the next one here on the ES110, and it's going to be the next one on the ES8, so let's see that. There we go, I found it, took me a little second there, but that's the harpsichord sound, and I'm pretty sure it's the same between the two. You also have a vibraphone sound on the ES8, which I'm not sure we have up on the ES110. Maybe we do, maybe we don't, let's find out. The tremolo seems a little bit more intense on the ES110 than the ES8, but other than that, I think the sounds are about the same, and that could just be me hearing that difference of the tremolo. Up next on the ES8 is a clavinet sound, which I do not think we have in the ES110, but let's check and see. Not a bad clavinet sound, definitely not the best, but also not the worst, pretty fun to hear. Uh, up next in the harpsichord and mallet section is a marimba sound, which the ES110 doesn't have either.
not super convincing like a real marimba, but it's also pretty fun to listen to. I like that one as well. Um, and we loop back around to the harpsichord. So that's the harpsichord and mallet section full of interesting and fun sounds to play with. There's also the strings and choir section, which has a slow string sound. And this ES-110 has the same, and it also has a faster style string pad. So let's hear the both of those. So the ES-110 has a slow strings and a faster punchy strings, which are kind of fun to play with. The ES-8 doesn't seem to have that exact same fast punchy strings, but it does have a warm strings variant, the string pad variant, and then also the string ensemble, which is the brightest punchiest one of them all. Up next is the choir ooh and ah, which you heard a quick taste of there when I accidentally clicked on it, and then there's also a simply a choir ah variant as well. So that's kind of fun. And then up next in the strings and choir section is a couple of pads as well. There's two different pads. Uh, I had the wrong button. We have the, hang on, give me a minute. We have the new age pad and we have the atmosphere pad. So here's those. So both of those are pretty interesting as well. I actually really like the new age pad. It was pretty fun to, to hear. The, the, both of these also have some bass sounds as well. I'm pretty sure the ES-110 does, and I know this does because they're right here in front of me. We, on the ES-8, we have a wood bass, we have an electric bass, a fretless bass, and a wood bass with the ride, and then it loops back around to the concert grand sound. So let's have a listen to the four bass sounds of the ES-8, and then I'll find the ones of the ES-110 and check those out too. So as you can hear, there's only two bases on the ES-110 and there's four bases on the ES-8 and they all sound pretty good to me. I like them all. So those are all of the sounds of the ES-8 versus ES-110. I did skip over a few of the different piano sounds of the ES-110 and the ES-8, but generally you guys get the point. The ES-8 has a lot of pretty nice sounds. Are there, are there, let me think for a minute, are there any in here I don't like? Well, I don't like the church organ. It's a little bit cheesy and the choirs aren't the greatest thing I've ever heard and the strings pads aren't the greatest I've ever heard either, but for the most part, 
part, virtually all of the sounds in the ES8 are really pleasant to listen to. And I was being a little bit harsh with the strings pads because they're not really my favorite sound anyways. The ES8 is full of really amazing sounds. The electric piano is a great, the organs are pretty good with the exception of that one church organ. The harpsichord and mallet section, while they're not the most realistic, they're still very pleasant to listen to. The bass sounds are good and the acoustic panels, like I said before, are fantastic, especially the SK Concert Grand. And many of the sounds of the ES110 are the same as in the ES8 as well, so that is pretty great too. Like the uh, the Wurlitzer and some of the organs are the exact same, and the basses are the exact same too. The acoustic pianos aren't as high quality in the ES110 as they are in the ES8, but they're still good, especially for the price category. For a first-time pianist, they'd be more than adequate for sure. The final thing I wanted to talk about between these two that I haven't actually touched on at all in this video, although I have been touching it throughout this whole video, is the action of these two keyboards. I felt like I'd leave this for later on in the video because perhaps my opinion of the ES8 might be a little bit controversial, um, but I wanted to talk about the action of both of these instruments. The ES110 uses Kawai's RH Compact Action, so it's a lighter, compacter version of the RH3. Is compactor a word? I know like a compactor is a thing, but like saying something is compactor, that, I don't think that's right, but you guys know what I mean. The RH3 is a little bit more of a beefy action than the RH Compact, and as a result, it has a different feel. Now, a lot of people really, really like the feel of the Kawhi ES8, and I can see where they're coming from. It does have a heavier, somewhat more realistic feel than the ES110, but I wanted to talk about that because I have a slightly different opinion than other people do of the RH3. Now, by all means, I'm not saying that the RH3 action or that the ES8 is bad. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that I think the ES8's action could be better, especially for the money. So what I want to do is turn both of these off because for the ES8, the volume actually doesn't turn off the line outputs and I only want to talk about the key noise themselves. So what I want to do here is just play the keys of the ES8 and they'll be making no noise at all. So just listen to the noise the keys make here. Okay, now let's hear the keys noise on the ES110. As you can hear, they both actually make a pretty substantial amount of noise. The ES8, though, definitely has a much quieter downward noise. It's a lot more quiet than the ES110. more rattly on the ES110, but it is a more affordable instrument, so it's a bit more acceptable. The sound of the ES8 that bothers me about the keys is when they come back up, they bounce, just like they do on the ES110. Hopefully you guys can hear that. And that's just something that I find kind of weird that you don't really see very much at all in the ES8's price class. The other actions of the other competing um, instruments don't make as much noise when they come up and they also don't bounce like that so the, as far as the noise is concerned which is something many of you guys have talked to me that you think is important about digital pianos i thought i'd touch on it here because the es8 is one of the few where when i'm actually playing it at least with this price class um the es8 is one of the few where i'm playing it and a lot of the times i'll notice the keys making noise and it sometimes can annoy me today it actually hasn't been too bad um but other days when i'm playing it i'm just like man these keys are so noisy so actually yeah i'm gonna turn it on again and i'll turn the es110 back on again as well just so they're on and look a little more interesting um and the other thing i wanted to talk about with the es8 is the feel of the action itself we talked about the noise it makes it's a little bit noisier than the others in that price class and probably it will get noisier with age but the thing i really wanted to talk about is the way the the action feels when you're actually playing it it does have a somewhat more realistic feel than the ES110. I will say that because it is a little heavier like a real piano would be. But the main difference between these two and the thing I dislike about the ES8 to a small degree, again, it's not a major flaw, just something I think could be improved upon, is the tactile feedback. Now, when you have a real piano, especially one that's, you know, of mid of middle class to upper class when pianos are concerned, you know, mid price to high price pianos, um, when you push on the keys, when you gently set your hand down on the keys, what you will feel is is the keys will just gently go down with your fingers. When you gently apply the weight of your hand to the keys, the keys will just slowly go down and gently fall to the bottom and make 
the sound make the piano sound um and you won't have to be working against the piano to have this happen you'll work with the piano the piano will help you play and that's the way the es110 works when you push when you set your hand down on the keys the keys gently fall down out of the way and they gently will come down to the bottom and make the instrument sound the es8 has more of a springy mm. feel to it and when you're when you're playing it very 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 quietly this is when it's most noticeable it almost feels like you're working against the piano it feels like the action is pushing the key upwards and it doesn't want to be played as much um and so that's one of the things that i find kind of not optimal about the es8 and the other thing is also when you're playing it extremely quietly you can often feel the escapement of the action this is a little bump that you'll feel towards the bottom of the key and it's here in the es8 because it's something that real pianos do when you push the key very gently like i'm doing right now in a real piano you'll feel this little bump towards the end of the key. Now in a real piano, at least all of the ones I've played, when you are pushing the key hard enough to actually make it sound, you don't really feel the let off anymore. You can only feel the let off when you push it down slowly enough to not make the action hit the string, to make the hammer hit the string. But as soon as you hit the key hard enough to make the piano make a sound, I don't really feel the let off anymore on a real piano or other digital pianos that have let off. Um, but with the ES8, you still do feel the let off when I'm playing it quietly. Here's a little excerpt of Moonlight Sonata for you. It just kind of has a sort of a rubbery feel when you're playing it very quietly that I think could be better. Now, once again, I will repeat myself. I am by no means saying that the RH3 action is bad, and I'm not saying that the ES8 is bad. If you've already ordered one of these and you're excited for it, don't become unexcited for it and cancel your order for it or something like that, because I'm not saying the ES8 or the RH3 is a bad action. I just think that for the price class, it could be improved. And if it was made a little bit more fluid feeling and a little bit more... What's the word? I guess lighter perhaps would be the word I'm looking for. Responsive perhaps it could be better. Now the dynamic response of the RH3 is excellent. It does everything I want it to do. Um, I just think it could be improved upon. Now the ES110, you might be thinking, oh, he likes the ES110's action more. And some aspects of it I do like. I like how easy it is to push the keys down and they respond so easily. But when you're playing quietly, a lot of the times you, I'll notice the keys actually bouncing and kind of bobbling under my fingers when I'm playing the ES-110, which isn't ideal either. Uh, it's not that big of a deal, um, but it isn't really something you'd find in most digital pianos. The ES-8 doesn't do it, and it's not something you'd find in a well-tuned real piano either. So the ES-110 is not perfect. The ES-8 isn't perfect. Um, but I think the ES-8 is a little bit farther away from being adequate for its price class than the ES-110 is. I think with a few small tweaks and improvements, the ES-8, or the RH3 action more specifically, could be truly phenomenal. It's pretty close, though. For general music, pop, rock, jazz, blues, and most classical pieces, you won't really have any difficulties playing the ES-8 at all. And that, I think, is everything I wanted to talk about today. The ES-8 versus the ES-110, a very interesting pair of digital pianos from Kawai. And Kawai, honestly, is excelling in the digital piano world at the moment. While I did say there were a couple of things about each one that I could think use, could use some improvement, overall, they are both really fantastic digital pianos. The build quality and the sounds in the ES-8 are nearly unparalleled. The build quality especially. Even the P515, which has a good build quality, I don't think is quite as good of a build quality as the ES-8. It doesn't have a metal top or a metal back or wooden sides. It's still a good build quality, but I think the ES-8 might be a little bit better than that. The ES-110's build quality is perfectly adequate for its price class, and honestly, I like both of them for what they are. So I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video as well. If you own one of these and you have your own feedback you want to put into this, let me know as well. I like hearing from my commenters. So many of you guys have wonderful things to say, and I love reading your kind comments. So if you do have any comments to say and you're enjoying my, these videos, you might want to let me know down in the comment section below. And if you're new here, you also might want to think about subscribing. If you do subscribe, thank you very much. Feel free to go check out the rest of my content. I have lots of cool videos of digital pianos, acoustic pianos, organs, keyboards, and all kinds of other cool stuff too. So if any of that sounds cool, you might want to think about subscribing. And if you do subscribe, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.